Promo Cat here. Check out the next possum episode of the Friday Zone. Yeah, Pete. Oh, wow, you, brought, you brought that in? That is cool. I did, I brought oh. it so I could show it to you. All right, well, let's pop this thing open and see if you are right. We'll use ink chromatography. Wait, well, what is cr chroma, cr chromato? Chromatography. So keep an eye out for the next episode of the Friday Zone. Right now. Production support for the Friday Zone is brought to you by the WTIU Children's Programming Endowment, ensuring quality children's programming for future generations of Hoosiers. Learn more at indianapublicmedia.org slash kidsfund. The IU School of Education, dedicated to improving, teaching, and learning in a diverse and rapidly changing world. More at education.indiana.edu. Smithville Fiber, the Gigacity Company, a philanthropic community partner since 1922, and proud supporter of numerous community organizations. More information at smithville.com. WFYI Public Media, inspiring Indiana with high quality educational content since 1970. By sharing stories and connecting people, WFYI inspires the best in our communities. And these Indiana public television stations, thank you. Hey, Ethan, take a look at all the fireflies I caught last night. Wow, Cassia, that's a lot. You know, you should actually punch some holes in the lid. Maybe later. I'd hate to wake them up. Welcome to the Friday Zone, everyone. I'm Cassia. And I'm Ethan. We're going to keep it clean on today's show, Cass. Yeah, our friends from the Stormwater Project are going to be here. They'll be helping us understand how we can help keep our waterways clean. Right. And we'll do that after this deep dive on, on the, the Friday, Friday Zone, Zone Playlist. playlist. Bottom of the ocean, there's a musician stirring up quite a commotion. They call him the Blue Stripe Snapper. Oh, there's no sea creature that can feature drumming chops like his. Save yourself some clams and you can swim on down to the Coral Club Bar. We'd love to have you, and you can catch a show. He's hooked to half the sea. Come one, come all, for the one they call. A show we up the half the sea with every hit from behind the kit X. Monday's jazz, here is Razzmatazz. <laughs> Tuesday's really sweeter with the funky beat. Wednesdays make a stop up for some smooth hip hop. Thursdays a lot with some vintage rock. Friday, everybody's there. He beats with a Latin flair. For the weekend, take a chance. Put on some disco pants. You can get to show he 
took the half the sea with every hit from behind the kit. It's Fish Sticks! Fish Sticks! Fish Sticks! Fish the guy's sticks. amazing. Fish Sticks! Fish Sticks! Fish Sticks! Fish Sticks! Yeah! Ow! Oh, play it! <laughs> Hi, Felix. What are we talking about today? Today we're going to talk about urine, and I brought something with me. Y urine? You mean pee? Yeah, pee. Oh, gross! You, br Look. Kevin, you brought that in? That is gross! I did. I brought oh. it so I could show it to you. Wow. Oh, look at all the look shades of Look at the different colors. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is the color of pee that it, you're, when you pee, it should be this color when you oh. look at it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So other colors of pee, there's this darker color. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. What, what, does, what does it mean when it's that dark? When it's that dark, it means that you're not getting enough water. Oh, okay. So when you don't get enough water, it means you should be drinking more. So you oh. should be drinking six cups of water every six day. Six cups. That's a. And look. That's more than fingers I have on this hand. It is. Look. So this is one cup of water. Oh. So you should have six of those at least every yeah. day. Six. That's a lot. Yeah. Because you want to stay hydrated. Right? Hydrated. Right. Okay. That and is if, important. If you go outside, you need uh -huh. to drink more water. Oh. If you okay. run around. Okay. What is? What is that last one? That does not look like good pee. I know. That one looks kind of gross, yeah, huh? Yeah, yeah. Well, sometimes if you take different medicines, like uh -huh. if you're sick and the doctor gives you antibiotics, uh -huh. it can make your pee orange. Oh. So, yeah. So really, that's not bad pee. Not really. It's just something that comes out when you have different medicines in From your body. From the medicines. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Heather, that is fascinating. So we learned it is important to drink lots of water so your pee is yeah. Clear. Because you want it to be this color yeah, right here. Yeah, that color P. Yep. The shades of urine. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Heather. You're welcome. Briley and Ariana are here to show us how to recycle an old water bottle into a piggy bank to save and keep track of your money. We're going to need a water bottle, pink construction paper, googly eyes, a pipe cleaner, pom poms, glue, and scissors. First, use the scissors to cut a hole into the water bottle big enough to drop coins into. Glue a piece of pink construction paper around the water bottle. Make sure to cut the paper covering the coin hole. Cut pig ears from the construction paper and glue them onto the front of the water bottle. Glue on some googly eyes. Glue on four pink pom-poms as feet. Finally, curl up your pipe cleaner and glue it to the back of your piggy bank to look like a pig's tail. Now you have a cute little piggy bank to store your money in. in the hey guys, we're here with our friend Kenneth Hi. and our friends Quentin and Dana from the Monroe County Stormwater Services. So what did we learn about today, guys? So today we're going to be learning about stormwater management. And have you ever heard about stormwater services before? Um, I, I haven't. haven't. So a lot of people haven't because you only know about it when something really bad's happening. So Kenneth, first what we're gonna do is this is our valley and we can kind of imagine how does, this. How does the water basically get into the river? Well, we'll find out here in a second. We'll see it when it rains. So the first thing I need to do is I have some houses in my hand and I need you to put them into our valley to demonstrate development. I can here help you out here. too. So, when Bloomington or Monroe County or Ellettsville, when they first developed, they developed along rivers and creeks because that's where they could get fresh water. And in the past, this area up here was, would be forested area. So when it rained, what do you think is gonna happen to our creek and our town? When it just normally rains and it rains onto the forest? It goes into the ground? Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, let's test that theory and find out now. So here's a hard rain and let's find out what happens. Oh. What do you see happening? It's going, it's going into the sponge. The dirt like absorbs it, I think. Yeah. And then it goes into the river. Yeah, some I, of it's coming out right oh, there. Oh, you see yeah, it? see a little bit there. Yeah. And so it's coming out, but it's not too much. Right? We don't see any problems. It takes like a long time. To there we go. Mm. Oh, there we go. Yeah, it's absorbing it. Okay, there you go. It goes down the creek. And, and it's coming out. Pipe. See, and it just goes down out 
down the creek and into the river and move down. And our houses are, no, are having a fine time. There's no flooding and there's no problem. So then why do we need like a, sand, a storm water regulation? Well, that's company? a good question. Because now if you jump to 2018 and we keep developing and building more houses and there's more people. And what we like to do is put in malls like this. So we can imagine this being a development or a mall. And when they did it, they didn't manage for storm water, right? So what happens now that we put in this parking lot, we put in all of our cars, what do you think is going to happen when we have a heavy rain? What do you think, Kenneth? They're gonna, the cars are going to move? Well, let's find out. So we pour the water, it's a heavy rain, and it goes onto our parking lot. Uh-oh. And it's an <gasps> impervious service, so it oh, floods happening? off. Oh, no, look it's, it's, look, it's going into the town here. You see that? Oh, our houses. No. And so what we see happens is without the forest uh, or other kind of mitigation, we see that it floods the town and it floods where people live. So this is when people get really upset, right? Is when their houses get flooded and it gets pushed downstream. If you can grab the house so it doesn't oh, yeah, of course. clog our river. So now set up our town again. Mm-hmm. So this is a little bit after the storm and everybody's probably a little bit upset. So what we want to do <laughs> is we want to put in... So, so, still survived, you know? No, they, they did. did. They were on the up, up on the mountain. The so what we do is we put in things like retention ponds. So Wait, what's a retention pond? Well, so this is an area where it's ne either near a house or around a development where when it storms, the water, instead of running off into the storm system or running off into the creek really quickly, it pools into these ponds. And when it does that, it helps slow down the water and it helps filter out some of the pollutants. So in this example, we put in a retention pond underneath our parking lot. And what do you think is going to happen now that we put in this pond? I'm not sure. Let's see what's going to happen. All Let's right. Put some water in. So now, same thing happens. There's a heavy rain, a hundred year rain, and it gets put on oh, and it floods oh, it's off. saving some of the water so then yeah. it doesn't flood and it, and it funnels it into this creek. Yeah. Well, that was really cool. So you guys have something else to show us, right? Yes. Okay, well, show us that um, just in a moment. We will be right back. In the Friday zone. Friday. It's okay, Zorg. I know you can hear me. You don't have to be embarrassed or afraid. I won't make fun of you. Just Listen and come out when you're ready. The City by the Sea by E A P. Lo, death has reared himself a throne in a strange city lying alone, far down within the dim west, where the good and the bad and the worst and the best have gone to their eternal rest. There, shrines and palaces and towers, time-eaten towers that tremble not, resemble nothing that is ours, around by lifting winds forgot, resignedly beneath the sky, the melancholy waters lie. Why does death live in the sea? I don't think he does. Uh, but the Dark Lord said... E.A.P. was being poetic. Oh. Why don't you come and join me? You don't have to be embarrassed. I'll read to you. Uh, I don't know. Fine. Just listen to the words. No rays from the holy heaven come down on the long nighttime of that town. But light from out the lurid sea streams up the turret silently. Gleams up the pinnacles far and free, up domes, up spires, up kingly halls, up fanes, up Babylon like walls, up shadowy, long forgotten bowers of sculpted ivy and stone flowers, upon many and many a marvelous shrine whose wreathed friezes intertwine the vial, the violet, and the vine. 
resign and leave beneath the sky, the melancholy waters lie. So blend the turrets and shadows there that all seem pendulous in the air, while from a proud tower in the town, death looks gigantically down. Zark feels very small, uh, not knowing how to read. It's okay, Zark. It's okay. I don't think less of you. You don't? No, of course not, silly. But Peggy Girlchild is so smart and reads a lot. That will not change our friendship. Mm -hmm. Besides, we will always be able to share the poetry of E.A.P. Thank you, Peggy. Would you like me to read you some more? Uh, yes, please. <laughs> there, open fanes and gaping graves yawn level with the luminous waves, but not the riches there that lie in each idol's diamond eye, not the gaily jewel of dead tempt the waters B, I don't know how we're gonna solve this one. We always find a way, Sammy. Someone drew this awful picture of Mr. Charles. I also accidentally dropped it in a puddle on the way here. Um, we, however, found some suspects and they all had these black markers, but I don't know how to tell which marker it was to, that, that drew this. Uh, Sammy, by being so clumsy, you have given us the answer to our problem. We'll use Ink chromatography. Wait, well, what is cr chroma, cr chromato? Chromatography. Ink is a mixture of several dyes. Chromatography is the method of separating those dyes. Look at the drawing. The water has made the black ink separate into different colors. See? Yeah, so how do we figure out which pen was used? Every pen has a different mixture of colors. First, we need to set up our chromatography operation. We need to cut coffee filters into strips, just like these, and draw one line on each with each marker. About half an inch away from the ends. Dip the end into cups of water. Help me fill some up. Is that good? Looks great. Now we tape it just until the end touches the water. Now we just have to wait. Look, Sammy, which ink color matches the one on the drawing? I think it's number one. Yes, I think it is. This one has too much red and that one has too much color, but this one just has the right amount. <sighs> number one. Let's look. Lauren order. She drew this. I'll go bring her in for questioning. Hang on, Sammy. Wait a second. Something is fishy. Look! It's Professor Thorne! Not again! I'll catch you, Thorne! Thanks to you all for helping us solve the case. See you next time! Quack, quack, everybody. You might think I'm the strangest looking duck you've ever seen, but I'm not. Does anyone know what I am? I'll give you a clue. I live in Australia. I'll give you another clue. I'm a mammal. Any guesses? Nope. I'm not a koala, but they also live in Australia. Give up? 
I'm a duck-billed platypus, and we're going to talk about me today on All About Animals. <laughs> so, let me tell you a little bit more about myself. I'm an excellent swimmer, and we platypus spend a lot of time in the water in small rivers and streams. Hi, I'm Edward. What are you again? A duck-billed hunga dunga? Hi, Edward. I'm a platypus, and that's spelled P-L-A-T-Y-P-U-S. You are one of the most interesting-looking critters I have ever seen. Well, thank you, Edward. I'll take that as a compliment. We platypus are pretty unusual animals. We have a bill like a duck, a tail like a beaver, and are monotremes. What does monotreme mean? I mean, mean again? It means that we lay eggs. We platypus are one of only two mammals that lay eggs. Um, okay. What do you like to do for fun? I like riding my bike and playing video games. Like I said, we platypus like to swim. Do you know how to swim, Edward? Does taking a bath count as swimming? I don't think so. Then no, I can't swim, but I want to learn. Excellent. Swimming is a wonderful exercise. Did you say excellent because you lay eggs? I did. I wanted to see if you were paying attention, Edward. I was. Is there anything else you would like to tell me? We are a popular mascot and are featured on the Australian postage stamp and the 20 cent coin. Cool. Can I have one of those? Of course, but I'll put it on your bill. Uh, I don't have a bill. You do. I guess that's why they call me a duck-billed platypus. I'm a platypus, and we'll see you next time on all about animals. In the Friday Zone Friday. Hey guys, we're back with Dana and Kenneth and Quentin, and we got a little landscape set up with trees and animals. What are we learning about right now? So we want to continue with our stormwater theme, and what we at Stormwater Services try to impart to the community is that whatever they're doing on their property, it ends up going somewhere when it rains. So we are going to continue with our little community here. And Kenneth has helped us set up farms, construction sites, animals, all sorts of things on a very rolly, just like Monroe County um, landscape. But we're gonna add some pollutants. So whether that is maybe fertilizer from someone working on their lawn, or it could just be sediment, dirt on construction sites. Um, and then of course manure, waste from our animals. So if you kind of would help me sprinkle some of these on here, you can take a shaker and you can put it wherever you want. We're just gonna add our little pollutants. Sometimes they're really easy to see out there and sometimes we don't know they're there. But we are going to make it rain and we're going to see where these tend to end up because anything we do on our properties or out on our streets and sidewalks, it does travel. So, one good more shake there, perfect. Grab your spray bottle. You it's, okay? um, might have to open it, actually. Oh. Mm -hmm. There you go, now it can there rain. We and we're just going to, we're not gonna fully douse it, but we wanna make it rain. We wanna see, especially raining from the hilltops, where these pollutants end up. And mostly we'll see, oh, you got a drippy one, don't you? Here, I'll switch you. Mostly we That's see, where's it going? <laughs> it's going down the hills, into our creeks, oh, into yeah, see it gathering up yeah. Monroe Lake. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what we try to do is help educate folks to remember that planting grass is important on open dirt areas, um, picking up after their dogs, and all sorts of things that help contain these materials instead of ending up in the lake where we want to go swimming, or even if we want to eat fish out of there, that kind of mm. thing. That's so interesting. So, um, so I, uh, so what, so what can we do like in our everyday lives to maybe help prevent these pollutants from entering our atmosphere? There are lots and lots of things. We call them best management practices. Mm. And as we talked about dog waste, um, or even all those different things we keep in our garages, whether we change the oil on our cars or our lawnmowers, those things need to be uh, handled and recycled correctly at the Solid Waste Management District. Um, 
even things like grass clippings and leaves that we think of as natural, those can clog our inlets. They can also cause algae blooms as they break down in our lakes and streams. So we encourage landscapers and folks to clean those up when they clean their yards too. And we also visited some water tunnels one time, right? And so we have some video of that um, that we can look at. Yeah. Okay, so and so are. here we are and we're visiting. Can you tell us what we're looking at right now or what we will be looking at? So what you'll be seeing is an area of our town that folks often don't know about. Our storm sewer system, most of it's underground and it's meant to convey all of our storm water or melting snow water, all that material away um, directly to our lakes and streams. Wow, okay, that's so interesting. Yeah, like I mean you see these tunnels um, pushing the water. So does this come from like the drains in the, in the city, like our sink, when we mm -hmm. like turn on our sink and it goes down the drain, that's where all this water goes? It does not. So our sinks, our toilets, our showers are connected to sanitary sewer and that will go to wastewater treatment plant and be treated. But what we like folks to think about is storm water, when it rolls through our streets and enters those inlets, it picks up everything it touches, like oil or cigarette butts, things like that, and goes directly to our lakes and streams without any treatment. And Quentin, you also have some pictures you wanted to show us really quick. Yeah. <laughs> So it's really important for these pollutants when they go into the when they go into our stormwater system, they end up down into our creeks and lakes. And in our creeks and lakes, th there are there's life in there, right? We don't always see them because they're really small, uh, but there's small water critters that live in there. So a lot of ones that people like are uh, crawdads, um, and the pollutants that go in there, such as motor oil. Um, goes in there and it really harms these critters and can wow. kill them. Well, thanks so much, Jaina. Is there any final thoughts to leave us with before we head out? Yes. Uh, <laughs> I think what we most want folks to know is that they do have an impact on what they do on their properties and that they can improve and help us keep uh, Monroe County's lakes and streams clean. Well, awesome. Well, thanks for joining us on the Friday Zone. Remember to visit our website, fridayzone.org, to watch past episodes, play games, and see behind-the-scenes photos. And remember to live, learn, and play the, the Friday, Friday Zone, Zone way. way. Yeah, good job, Kenneth. You killed Thank that. Thank you. Okay, uh, okay, so... That was the nicest thing. I think I first any word. Production support for the Friday Zone is brought to you by the WTIU Children's Programming Endowment, ensuring quality children's programming for future generations of Hoosiers. Learn more at indianapublicmedia.org slash kidsfund. The IU School of Education, dedicated to improving, teaching, and learning in a diverse and rapidly changing world. More at education.indiana.edu. Smithville Fiber, the GigaCity Company, a philanthropic community partner since 1922, and proud supporter of numerous community organizations. More information at smithville.com. WFYI Public Media, inspiring Indiana with high quality educational content since 1970. By sharing stories and connecting people, WFYI inspires the best in our communities. And these Indiana public television stations, thank you. Do you cool cats have the perfect idea for the Friday Zone? Want to share a hobby, tell us about an event, or let us know what's happening in your town? Then contact us on our website at fridayzone.org or send an email to zone at indiana.edu. Right meow!